time I take the Fader Bridge to cross the River Senegal and reach the St. Louis Island, I feel like I'm on a movie set. Stories of the former colonies still float in the burning air of the early morning. In this northern part of Senegal, the ocean and the river bring some freshness to the desert's gates. Thanks to the salted or fresh water resources, many vegetables can be grown, livestock fed and fish caught. I'll have to head up the river back to the small town of Dagana, whose market I was recommended. For the moment, this is St. Louis Market, the former capital of the country that's opening its gates to me. The charcoal vendors, essential to African women cooks, are already there. The first customers can make the most of fully stocked stalls. Let's remember that women spend much of their time preparing meals and start early to allow their dishes to simmer. To get a better idea of this market, I'm meeting up with an old friend, Ali. Hello, Ali. How are you? Hello. I'm fine. And you? How are things? Good. Very good. So we're on the biggest market on St. Louis Island. Indeed. This is in Dartout market. And as you can see, I came this morning to do my shopping. Let me tell you, you'll find everything on this market. And every day, people come to restock simply because we don't have fridges at home to store food. So it's a real problem. This is a market that goes back a long time, virtually to the colonial era, so way before independence. You can get any sort of food, vegetables, and then fish and meat. So this is a market that is really very important because of its function. Yes, it provides everything the people of St. Louis need. In addition, it's very lively because there are women, men, it's very colorful, it's alive. Absolutely, absolutely, it's lively. And luckily, it's a market that takes place every day. And it's also open from dawn to dusk, so we're never late for shopping. Right, Ali, I'll let you do some shopping and I'll see you later on the market. Right, OK, see you later. See you later. OK. So I'm leaving my friend to go to the Longue de Barberie nearby. On this sand spit at the camp Ocean et Savane, I'm supposed to meet someone. So close to the ocean, it would have been a shame not to offer you a first fish recipe. This is barbecued theof with potago sauce, a must for barbecue fans. Here are the ingredients for two people. First of all, Donacion da Costa, our chef, who's also the chef at the residence hotel in St. Louis, scoops out the fish and washes it well, then stuffs it with the tomato. Then onion, the chives and bay leaf. He adds a little salt and pepper. Donacion then cuts up the garlic coarsely and places it in the gills of the fish. He also stuffs the sides. He halves the potatoes, salts them, and bakes them in a preheated oven at 150 degrees. Bake them for 20 minutes, depending on the size of the potatoes. He brushes the fish with olive oil before, then places it on the grill. As you know, fish doesn't need to cook for long. Three to four minutes on each side is enough. Flip it from time to time to prevent it from burning. While the fish is cooking on the grill, Donacion prepares the Botago sauce. He takes a block of smoked mullet roe, the famous Botago, you can find it in grocery stores, and he finally grates it so as to obtain a powder. In a hot frying pan, he begins to reduce the cream. He adds the botago, about two teaspoons full. He adjusts the seasoning with salt and pepper.
The fish is perfectly grilled. The only thing left to do for Donation is to garnish a dish for this traditional recipe from the town of St. Louis you must enjoy to the sound of the waves as they tickle the Langue de Barbary. I'm back on the Nadal Tute market. There are gradually more and more customers, but it doesn't stop some vendors who are up early from having a break. I'm looking for Ali. Ah, I can see my friend Ali. It looks like Ali's interested in a kind of bean. Ali, how's it going? Yes, good. So what are you trying to buy? I've come to the market in the morning, as you can see. At first, I don't focus on what I want to prepare. That is to say, when I get to the market, because prices are going to fluctuate a lot. So here, for example, black-eyed pea is an ingredient of many meals. It's commonly called broad bean. So I must say, there's a lot of protein in it. And besides, even in the era of slavery, in Gore, those beans were actually used to fatten slaves who hadn't reached the minimum weight of 60 kilograms. And to this day, we say that it's still very nourishing. So we cook it with meat, to make sauces, and we also use it to mix with couscous. But you can also make donuts with them. There we've got what we call carcade. Ah, carcade, to make juice. Red carcade, that's right. In fact, this is to make juice. You can even make ice cream with it. Ah, yes, I know. Here's something interesting. Ah, yes, there, yes, right. So here we've got what's called monkey bread. It's actually the fruit of the baobab. Let me see that. The baobab is also the national emblem. We use it to make juices. You can also make ice creams with it. And when cooking some dishes, we use the juice of the monkey bread to spice up the sauce a little. So, speaking of taste, and I know that the Senegalese like to eat food that's a little spicy, I noticed those small chili peppers. I guess that's hot, right? Ah, yes, right. That is chili. I must say that here we love to eat very, very, very spicy food. There's even a sort of chili here, you can see. That's commonly called Tyson. You know, it's like the great black American boxer named Mike Tyson. Knockout. He was so strong he used to win all his fights by a knockout. That's why we've called that chili after that boxer. It has a punchy taste. You're right, you've got it. <laughs> this confirms what I thought. In cooking, you can get inspiration from anywhere, even sport. I'm going to change scenes myself. I'm leaving Ali and the Nada Tute market for a moment to head up the river Senegal to Dagana. Goods coming from the Sahara and the heart of the continent used to travel through this place towards the ocean. This former trading post has become a quiet little town where the old houses of wealthy merchants are frozen in the past. Dagana is quiet, except for the market mornings. Here, no asphalt, few cars, and a friendly atmosphere. Everything a cook might need is sold, and mainly local products. This fish comes from the river, and the vegetables come from this land where it's so hard to grow them. There are many products on the Dagana market, particularly products used every day, such as sweet potatoes. Good afternoon. Hello. So these are sweet potatoes. Can you explain to me how you cook them? You can boil them, and you can also grill them. How do you sell the potatoes? Do you sell them by the weight, or do you sell small stacks like this one? We sell small piles. 
There are some that cost 25, 50 and 100 CFA francs. So I see you've got several sorts of potatoes. There are small ones and there are some bigger ones over there. What's the difference between the two? None. Here there are some small ones and big ones over there, but they're of the same sort. Over there are some green leaves. What is it you sell? What do you use it for? These leaves over there are sweet potato patches. And how do you plant them? Let me show you. This is how we plant them. Thanks very much. Sweet potato is the basis for many recipes. It's nourishing, easy to cook and not expensive. Three qualities that make it a success across the African continent. Fish, like meat, is a much more expensive ingredient. Like everywhere else, but in the tropics even more so, it should be eaten very fresh on the very day it was caught. At some point, the market gets very crowded. Here we are in a place that has a lot of success because they sell the paste to cook the mafé. Hello. Good morning, sir. What's this paste made from? We grill peanuts and then we reduce them to a paste and we put them in a bucket. We call it tigadeg, peanut paste. Can I get a sachet of it? How much does a sachet cost? Oh, it depends. 100 grams? Yes, 100 grams, please. There, how much is that? That'll be 125 CFA francs. Right, what I'm also interested in are those little mixes you have there. Yes, there's chili, pepper and garlic, and it's a nice mix. These are sachets with only chili, garlic and broth called adja. And pepper again. I'll take one of those. I'll give you a sachet like this. It costs 25 CFA francs. What do you cook with it then? We put it in mafé, rice, fish, and many other dishes. Abdullah, hurry up, will you? How much do I owe you altogether? It's 150 then? CFA francs. 150 CFA francs, how much is that? It's less than a euro. I'd left the St. Louis market with some Tyson chili. I'm leaving the Dagana market with a spice mix just as explosive. Outside big cities like Dakar and St. Louis, provincial life is worth a visit. Like Dagana, where life takes its course slowly, going with the flow of the Senegal River. It's on the Long de Barbary again that I discovered another recipe with black-eyed peas the beans Ali had told me about at the Nadatute market. It's baked lamb with black-eyed peas in tomato. Here are the ingredients to serve too. First, you have to work on the leg. Our chef da Costa peels the garlic, then cuts it into strips to pierce the leg with. He covers it with plenty of cumin and herbs. He adds a bit of coarse salt and brushes it with mustard. dash of olive oil and in the oven, which has been preheated to 200 degrees Celsius. Cook for about 15 minutes. While the lamb leg is cooking, Damien moves to the black-eyed peas. He chops the garlic coarsely. He scoops out the tomatoes.
and it's time to make a pesto with finely chopped basil. The garlic. He mixes everything together in olive oil. A little salt and pepper. To cook it, he boils salted water. As for lentils, you need to sort the black-eyed peas and remove any small stone that may have been caught in during the harvest. In a frying pan, he pours a little olive oil and cooks the tomatoes over high heat. Then he adds the pesto and adjusts the seasoning a little. The black-eyed peas are cooked. He purees them and pours them into the frying pan. It's important to stir very well. Black-eyed peas are cooked, and so is the lamb. The only thing left to do is garnish this tasty dish, very popular in St. Louis. I'm back on the Nada Tute market in St. Louis, Senegal. It's late in the morning now. I've got to find my friend Ali, but the maze of streets don't make it easy to look for him. The fishmongers are preparing the morning catch, fished in the nearby ocean. Year after year for fishermen families, it's more and more difficult to live off it. The huge nets of foreign trawlers cruising offshore catch most of the stock and deplete it beyond what's reasonable. <laughs> what are you buying, Ali? I'm buying oil to get lunch ready. So peanut is, this is peanut oil, isn't it? That's right, peanut oil. So these are the seeds you've got here, and these are the peanut seeds. So every year we've got a production that's about 600,000 tonnes. Which means that economically speaking you're doing okay because many people work on the harvest ah, here. Ah yes, of course, of course. You know, in the past agriculture was mostly based on precisely these peanut seeds. We're used to eating peanuts, for example, in Europe as a snack with a drink, but here it's used to make oil, of course, but also in many recipes. There's mafé. That's right. Not only do we eat it grilled, as in France, which is very nice, but we also use it to make sauces, such as mafé, for example, or in other dishes like couscous, basti, or ngala. So you see, it's very popular among Senegalese because it gives a good taste to things. And it's also very, very nourishing. Can you show me, Ali, how the packaging's done? It's true that it's not served in a bottle. That's simply because I came without a container. But today I must say that using plastic is very convenient. Now we come to the market empty-handed, and we leave with plastic bags. The only thing is be careful, because if the plastic bag bursts, it's a real disaster. Ah, you're right, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the last recipe I present you with is a traditional one in Senegal. We're in the Soar area of St. Louis. Every woman cooks it, each adding their personal touch. Caddy is preparing chicken yassa for the whole family. The basic ingredients are obviously chicken, onions, tomatoes, peppers, rice, mustard, vinegar, lime, garlic, chili, oil, salt and pepper. Caddy adds mixed diced vegetables. She starts off by cooking the rice. Caddy puts water to boil on the charcoal oven, cookware you'll find in all West African families. While the water heats up, she cleans the vegetables, then cuts up the ones she's going to need for the sauce. The onions, plenty of them, the tomatoes, the green peppers. She rinses the rice with water. Then she puts it over boiling water to steam cook it. It's important to make sure it's perfectly sealed.
She mixes mustard, a stock cube, pepper in large quantities. The chicken has been marinating for a good two hours in chili, pepper, garlic, vinegar and lime juice. Caddy gets back to the rice. She pours it into water to cook it a second time after the steam cooking. She covers it up with water. How long you cook it depends on the amount, but five or six minutes is usually enough. It's time to put the chicken into the pan. She coats it with the marinade. The chicken shouldn't be the only one having a good time. Caddy treats herself to a tea break, the most consumed beverage in Senegal. When the chicken is cooked for 30 minutes, she takes it out and heats up peanut oil. She puts butter into the rice. She puts the chicken back to cook and slowly glazes it. Caddy's gravy's now on the stove. She sorts the onions and vegetables and cooks them for about 20 minutes. She puts the chicken, now grilled, into the sauce with the onions. Her trick is to add a little sugar to enhance the flavor. The star finally arrives, the chili. A fateful moment, you can't make a mistake when using it because it would be dreadful. It's crushed at the last minute and used according to the taste of the family. Ali, remember, has already shown us this one here. It's the famous Tyson chili, remember? Like the boxer. The chicken yassa is now ready. It's time for the family to enjoy it. Senegalese are big rice consumers. An important part of the production is local. They like fatty meats, couscous, millet mash, a bambouli, or tiboudienne. But tonight, Caddy's chicken yassa is going to make the whole family and myself happy. The morning is coming to an end and the market is about to close its doors. The butchers are arranging the last pieces of meat with the hope of selling them. But the meat is still expensive for the housewife and you should always make sure it's well cooked before you eat it. As always, a market is the ideal place to taste the local dishes. I'm waiting for Ali in a dibiturri, a traditional micro restaurant. Outside, the sun's high, and because of the stifling heat, it's nice to stay in the shade, especially if you're a little hungry. This morning was a long one. Ali, Ali it wasn't easy finding the dibitri. It wasn't, was it? Because I haven't popped by for a while. So you told me you wanted me to taste something. It's called dibi. Yes, and this place is called a dibitri. So it certainly comes from the French word, the verb débité, to cut, to chop. Ah, OK. So you see this meat is going to be chopped in small pieces, like that, and grilled. What's that? It looks like liver. Yes, this is mutton liver. Now, you know, Senegalese really enjoy coming to the dibi. But bear in mind, it's quite expensive. You talk to me about eating. I'd like to taste it. Well, you're right, you're right. Are these the chunks of grilled liver? This is grilled liver. Can you tell me what you, what you would call your cooking? Here we actually cook some dishes that are specific to Senegal, such as tiboudien, yassa, chicken yassa, fish yassa. You see, that's really Senegal. Finally, if we say that the Senegalese are gourmets, is that true? Oh, I wouldn't say no. In any case, I am. I'm greedy. Senegalese like to eat. Thanks, Ali, for this visit to the St. Louis market. Have a good meal. The Nda Tute market will be a nice memory. If one day you come to northern Senegal in the sunny streets of St. Louis, go and take a look. Send Ali my regards. Mm -hmm.